Today, we'll turn our attention from the universal governing equations of continuum mechanics, the conservation laws, to the specific equations that describe the mechanical properties of particular continuum materials. And these are called the constitutive equations. Constitutive equations describe the mechanical properties of specific materials, in particular by providing an equation for the stress as a function of a kinematic quantity. They are so named because the constitutive properties, the mechanical properties of a material, depend on its physical constituents, its structure and microstructure. In theory, the constitutive equations could be derived from more fundamental principles found, for example, in statistical mechanics and thermodynamics. But in practice, these are also require idealizations and for real materials, especially in biomechanics and biophysics, we need to use uh, experimental tests. It's important to realize that constitutive equations are idealizations, they're approximations of reality. And the validity and accuracy of the idealization doesn't depend only on the material. It also depends on the situation or physical problem that we're trying to solve. For example, it can depend on the scale of the problem. If we're interested in modeling the flow of water around a ship, then this could be a, a very different approximation than modeling the flow of water in micro channels. It also depends on the physical problem that we're trying to solve. For example, the flow of air in the lungs or the flow of blood in the blood vessels can be accurately approximated as an incompressible flow. Blood and air under, for those problems can accurately be approximated as incompressible fluids. But if we were interested in the way ultrasound waves propagate, which is also a problem that can be solved with the equations of continuum mechanics, then we couldn't use the assumption of incompressibility because, in fact, the very propagation of sound waves depends on the fact that uh, fluids like blood and air are slightly compressible. And the difference between the ultrasound densities that we see in the lungs and the blood is dependent on the difference in the density between the air in the lungs and the, and the blood in the vessels. It also depends on the loading conditions. For example, in many engineering problems, when the material is under the working loads, then we can assume that the material is elastic and frequently linear. But those same approximations and equations wouldn't be valid if the material was under failure loads. So we use certain constitutive equations for design conditions, but we have to use different constitutive equations to understand failure conditions. Now, as we know, uh, there are different types of continua that are all governed by the universal equations of continuum mechanics. The main differences between solids and fluids is that solids can sustain a shear stress indefinitely without flowing. And they usually have some defined, unloaded, or original natural state. Fluids, on the other hand, cannot sustain a shear stress indefinitely without flowing, and they have no particular unloaded natural or preferred state. As you know, fluids can be liquids or gases, and they differ mainly in their density and compressibility. Fluids tend to be more dense and less compressible. Gases are less dense and more compressible. In biomechanics, we frequently encounter materials that actually have combinations of solid and fluid-like properties. 